Good morning. This is Pastor Paul Elgin from First Presbyterian Church. We're going to resume our weekly devotions, but this time they'll be posted on Wednesday, and they will usually reflect something that's going to happen the next Sunday in worship. For instance, I'm going to share with you this week William Barclay's thinking about 2 Corinthians 8, where Paul is actually seeking support from the church in Corinth for the poor Christians uh, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the birthplace of Christianity, but because they were being persecuted, they were now the most challenged, the most deprived, the most socially isolated. Paul has a fondness for the church in Jerusalem. He is writing to the Corinthians who have previously been very generous, but now seem to be lagging behind. I'm going to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, starting at verse 7. This is the word of God. Just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in for your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. And here is my advice about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it, according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need. Then there will be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this portion of his holy word. Barclay writes, One of the things that lay nearest to Paul's heart was the collection that he was organizing for the church of Jerusalem. This was the mother church, but she was poor. And it was Paul's desire that all the Gentiles' churches should remember and help that church, which was their mother in the faith. So here he reminds the Corinthians of their duty and urges them to generosity. He uses five arguments to appeal to them to give worthily. He cites the example of others. He tells them how generous the Macedonian churches had been. They were poor and in trouble, but they gave all they had, far more than anyone could have expected. At the Jewish Feast of Purim, there was a regulation which says that, however poor a man is, he must find someone poorer than himself and give him a gift. It is not always those who are most wealthy who are the most generous. Often those who have least to give are the most ready to give. As the common saying has it, it is the poor who help the poor because they know what poverty is like. Second, he cites the example of Jesus Christ. For Paul, the sacrifice of Jesus did not begin with the cross. It didn't even begin with his birth. It began in heaven when he laid his glory by and consented to come to earth. Paul's challenge to the Christian is, with that tremendous example of generosity before you, how can you hold back? Third, he cites their own past record. They have been foremost in everything. Can they lag behind in this? 
If men were only true to their own highest standards, if we all lived always at our best, what a difference it would make. He stresses the necessity of putting fine feeling into fine action. The Corinthians had been the first to feel the appeal of this scheme. But a feeling which remains only a feeling, a pity which remains a pity only of the heart, a a fine desire that never turns into a fine deed, is a sadly truncated and frustrated thing. The tragedy of life so often is not that we have no high impulses, but that we fail to turn them into actions. He reminds them that life has a strange way of evening things up. Far more often than not, we find that it is measured to us with the same measure as we measure out to others. Life has a way of repaying bounty with bounty and the sparing spirit with the sparing spirit. Paul says a very fine thing about the Macedonians. He says that, first of all, they gave themselves, and so indeed they did. Two of them stand out above all the others. There was Aristarchus of Thessalonia. No, I didn't get that right. (laughs) Aristarchus of Thessalonia. He was with Paul on the last journey to Rome. Like Luke, he must have come to a great decision. Paul was under arrest on his way to trial before the emperor. There was only one way which Aristarchus could have accompanied him, and that was by enrolling himself as Paul's slave. Aristarchus, in the fullest sense, gave himself. Then there was Epaphroditus, When Paul was in prison in the later days, he came to him with a gift from Philippi, and there in prison he fell grievously ill. As Paul said of him, he nearly died for the work of Christ. No gift can be in any real sense a gift unless the giver gives it with a bit of himself. That is why personal giving is always the highest kind, and that is a kind of giving which Jesus Christ is the supreme example. The Old Testament quotation with which Paul concludes this message is from Exodus 16:18, which tells how when the Israelites gathered the manna in the wilderness, whether a man gathered little or much, it was enough. Pray with me, please. Almighty God, whether we have a little or much, help us to be generous. Help us to have the spirit of Jesus who will direct our giving after all. Father, bless our church. Bless all the churches in Casa Grande, every person who calls on the name of Jesus Christ wherever they are. Bless them and fill them with your generous spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. May this find you happy and healthy. Still trust in God, but still wash your hands.